Okay, so when we are talking about uh, measurement, that's a, it's a foundational idea for the sciences, physical science, you're going to get this, a lot of these same concepts again in chemistry and a lot of the same concepts again in physics. Um, biology cares about measurement too, but it's more, um, it, it's a foundational concept for physical sciences, is how do you measure things. Um, so historically different standards were used in different cultures. Oftentimes it was the leader of a people, the, the chief of a village or the king of a, of a country or something, and his body would oftentimes turn into a measurement. So um, in, in America we have a unit of measurement called the foot. And that was because it used to be measured off of the king's foot. And however long his foot was, that was the foot. Which, which is interesting because the, uh, you know, if, you're, if your house is 20 feet by 30 feet, and then you get a new king who's got small feet, now the same house might be 26 feet by 40 feet, right? Because it's the king's foot. And then what happens... When the king dies young and his son inherits the crown at like the age of 10, which happens sometimes in history, now your foot changes because the young man's going to grow up, right? So it's, it's strange. Um, and one village or one kingdom might say, you know, let's build a catapult with a 15-foot long beam. And then I go to my country and my foot is different because I have a different king. And so my catapult's beam... It's a different length than yours. So foot uh, used to be a foot. And the inch used to be the, uh, the length of the last joint of the thumb of the king. That's the original inch. Okay? And then the yard, when he stuck his arm out from his fingertip to his nose, is a yard. Right? And so those units of measurement used to be just based off of the ruler's body. Um, and... Different cultures would define them differently, and even if you had the same definition, you had a different leader, different like causes a problem, especially in the sciences, because um, it might work well and good for construction workers in one country to just use their system and not care about anybody else. But scientists are going to want to say, hey, I measured this thing, and it's so-and-so inches long or so many feet long, and if the foot and the inch aren't the same from culture to culture, it's, it's yeah, science. It's a problem. So... Um, a new standard was needed, and that was uh, the French came up with it, and um, they called it the metric system because in French the verb to measure is metre, so this is the measuring system, right? The metric system, um, and we use well, scientists use the metric system in America. America is now the only country in the world not using the metric system for everything. So I don't know why we don't. We're arrogant and stupid. Um, we should be on the metric system too, but we're not. So we still have feet and inches and yards and weirdness like that. Um, but everybody else uses the metric system. So I need to make sure that you're familiar with the metric system. Okay, so standards of measurement that we use in the metric system. Uh, meter, liter, and gram. Um, there's more. In your textbook on page 50, it gives you more information about different um, units of measurement. But the, uh, they started with something very much like the yard. And uh, historically, this was still the length of the arm from fingertip to nose of the king of the land, right? So it works for me. I could be the king of France at the time. Um, but they started with this measurement, right? And they said, okay, we're going to use this. This is the standard unit of length, the meter. And then they said, okay, well, we need a volume measurement. And they wanted everything to be related to each other so that you could easily convert from one kind of measurement to another. So they said, okay, we're going to use our volume measurement, but we're going to base it on the meter. So they thought, okay, <coughs> volume. We could do a cubic meter, right, this wide, this deep, this tall. That's a whole lot of water. That's a whole lot of liquid. Nobody's ever going to use that much of something for, like, cooking or buying oil or whatever. So they needed a smaller unit. So they used a decimeter, which is a tenth of a meter, right? And so you go this much by this much by this much. And you have a liter. It's pretty cool. So one cubic decimeter is a liter of liquid. 
And so they thought that's a good amount. That that will be some volume that you can buy and sell with and use in recipes, and that that'll be handy. So they you have a cubic decimeter of liquid, and then they said, okay, we need a weight measurement. And again, they want it to be tied together. They want it to be all so you can convert between them. So they said, okay, well, the most common substance that people will be measuring is probably water. Like that's where everything has got water in it. So they took a liter of water, a cubic decimeter of water, and they weighed it, and they called that weight a kilogram. So um, the the SI, the standard um, standard uh, increment measurement of, of weight, is actually the kilogram. And you'll notice that there is a, a prefix here we'll get to in a minute. That means 1,000 grams. So the gram, the, a gram by itself, not a kilogram, is actually about the weight of a paper, but it's pretty light. Pretty light, but a thousand grams is a kilogram, and that's the standard unit for weight. So they're all tied together, which makes it really nice because if you if you want to know um, the weight of a certain volume of water, all you've got to do is express it in liters, and then it's exactly that many kilograms. That's kind of cool. Um, if you want to know the volume of a of, of a room, you can measure it in meters and then convert meters to liters pretty quickly because one liter is a cubic decimeter. So it, it allows you to flip between the units pretty quickly. There's other standard units, but again, it's on your it's in your book and we're not gonna cover you here in the lecture. So the, um, the metric system is base 10, which is really handy. That means that everything is multiplied or divided by 10 to change units. So on your meter stick, this is one meter. There are 10 decimeters in the middle of it. So this is a decimeter and 10 of those fit within a meter. And then within each decimeter, there are 10 centimeters. And within each centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. And you can keep going, right? There's tenths of that and tenths of that. Um, and then you can go up by groups of 10 too. One meter, 10 of them are a deca meter. 10 of those is a hectometer, uh, and a thousand meters would be a kilometer or a kilometer. It makes it really nice for converting units and measuring things. It's a lot better than the English system, where 12, you know, three feet are in a yard, and you have 5,280 feet in a mile. Like, who, who cares? Why would you memorize that? Uh, 12 inches and a foot, and then our inches are divided into into um, powers of two, so half of an inch, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, thirty-second of an inch, sixty-fourth of an inch. Uh, it's crazy. And then volume makes me even more insane. Three teaspoons in a tablespoon, three tablespoons in a quarter of a cup, uh, two cups in a pint, two pints in a quart, four quarts in a gallon, and then we get into bushels and pecks and it, there's all kinds of weird numbers, and you've got to memorize all these strange conversion factors for English. But in the metric system, it's all based by 10. So you just move decimal points. It makes it really handy. You don't actually have to do any math. You just have to move the dot, right? So um, this is really, really nice. The prefixes here um, are just the, the Greek prefixes for counting. So this is 1,000, this is 100, this is 10, 1 tenth. One, one one hundredth and one one thousandth for these different prefixes. So um, we had a pneumatic offered to us. King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. Um, and so you could memorize that if you wanted to. That helps you with K, H, D, D, C, M. Deca and deci, this is 10 and this is a tenth. Uh, so just keep those straight. But the metric system is a lot easier to use. I think America just hasn't used it because there's too many people who are too used to their system and don't want to change. But everybody else in the world uses this system, and American science uses this system. Okay, so we have some pictures. Um, so if I were to ask you to measure the length of a freeway, you would not get out there with your meter stick, right? <laughs> and go, okay. 48, 49, 50, 51, counting in centimeters, you take forever. So for big, long things, we like to use kilometers. 
So a kilometer is the right unit of measurement for roads and freeways and things of that nature. Um, but when you get to like sports fields, this is, uh, this is still pretty big, but it's not like a highway. So here we could use hectometers if we wanted to, 100 meters long. And actually a lot of playing fields are one hectometer, 100 meters long, soccer fields especially. Uh, when you get to pools, then you don't have hundreds of meters, but you've got lots of meters, right? So you measure this in meters. This is a 25 meter Olympic pool. Um, is this a real Olympic pool? Well, this is an Olympic pool. Yeah, yeah. The Olympics moves every time, so it's not like one pool. Um, you get the smaller units, and you could measure this table in meters if you wanted to, but the, the short side would be a decimal, would be like 0.4 meters or something of that nature. So you could use decimeters for this, right? Click. There you go. You could use decimeters for this. Um, and you would have some small reasonable number of decimeters for all of those measurements. When you get into even smaller things, um, you might want to use centimeters for the width of this chair. You know, you could have like 20 centimeters or something like that for this. Uh, and then when you get into coins, coins are very small. So like the width of a coin, how thick is this? You definitely want to be using millimeters for the thickness of that. So these, these measurements have different uses. And the cool thing about the metric system is all you got to do is move the decimal place. And you can have whatever measurement makes you happy. <laughs> OK, that's fine. So accuracy and precision. Um, an accurate measurement is one that corresponds to reality. The data is true. And a precise measurement is repeatable. So in other words, um, you know, I've been, I, I don't know if you've noticed me last year versus me this year, you have me last year, but I've been trying to lose weight and get smaller. Uh, if, if I were to step on a scale and I didn't like how much weight it told me that I lost, I could just sneak under the scale and turn the knob. <laughs> and then yeah. I step back on the scale and now it says a smaller number and I'm like, yeah, I, I did a great job. Right? Yeah, thanks, extra points for you. So um, the, uh, that would, however, would not be an accurate measurement, right? Because it's not real. I just went in and fiddled with my tool to make it tell me what I wanted to say. But if I didn't turn it back, every time I got on the scale, it would still be like four pounds less, right? So I'd be precise, but not accurate. Um, repeatable measurements are important in science because repeatable measurements help you know that you did it right. So we're gonna do a lab where you measure something and then you use the same tool and you measure that thing again. And you're like, why am I doing this? I already measured it once. Because we're seeing how precise you are and how precise your tool is. If you measure something, and the width of this mouse pad is 19.4 centimeters. And then I step back and I come back up to remember the measurement of that mouse pad again. 19.4, 19.5. Oh, wait, try again. Here we go. 19, 19.4. 19 okay, 19.4 centimeters. So, I am repeating my measurements to make sure I'm doing it right and that my tool is reliable, right? So precision means do it a bunch of times, do you get the same thing? Are you measuring this well? Accuracy is, is it true data? So me stepping on a scale that I fiddled with because I like the number better, that's not accurate. Me stepping on a scale that has been calibrated and is gonna tell me the truth, that's accurate. So when you talk about measurements in science, we wanna make sure that the measurements are both accurate and precise that the data is reliable, and that we know how to use our measuring tool, and we're getting the right measurements, and we can repeat that, and other people can get the same measurements, right? So accuracy and precision are similar ideas, but not the same idea. So here's something that can help you think about that. If you're a, if you're a, a, you know, a rifleman, and you're out trying to shoot a bullseye, and you get something like this, oh, don't try to earn your living with as a rifleman. But if you get this kind of result, then the, the, the shots are all over the place, so the precision is not there. It's not repeatable. You're not getting the same thing every time. And your, your scattered shots are not scattered around the bullseye, so you're not accurate and you're not precise, okay? But if you get this result, 
you're still not precise. You're not getting the same results all the time. But at least your error is all around the bullseye. So you're accurate, right? You're shooting at the middle of the target, but you're not getting the same thing all the time. So this is accurate, but not precise. This result is very precise. Your bullets are almost going to the same hole, but you can't aim, okay? So you're getting the same result all the time, but it's not correct. This is not accurate, but this is precise, repeatable, but not on target. This is what you want, um, all of your bullets going through the bullseye. And so this is very, very precise and very accurate. So applying that again back to measuring and science, you're going to, you want to be able to use your measuring tools well so that you're accurate. And every time you measure something or if your lab partner measures the same thing, you want to get the same number. So you want to be precise. Oh, just kidding. There you go. So when you go to measure something in science, you're going to have a measuring tool to use. And that tool will limit your accuracy. You can only measure what your tool lets you measure. So this is a meter stick that is marked every millimeter. So I could measure something accurately to the nearest millimeter, right? But I, if I really pay attention, I can guess at how far it is between those two marks. So the millimeters are really close, very, very close. But if, if the object I'm measuring goes a little bit past one line, but not all the way to the other, I can kind of eyeball how far it is between those two gaps, and I can guess one more digit. So again, I'm measuring the width of this mouse pad, and the ruler tells me, the meter stick tells me 19.4, but if I really pay close attention, I see that it doesn't quite make it to the 19.4. It's just uh, a little bit that way of the 19.4 of the mark. So I could record 19.38. See what I've done? Is I've, I've read as many digits as I can, and then I'm going to infer one more digit. I'm going to eyeball, I'm going to guess one more decimal place. And on analog measurement tools like this, you can do that. Um, in the triple beam balance that you'll be using in a lab. The triple beam balance, same thing, it's analog. It gives you tenths of a gram. But when you place the thing to balance it, if it's not right on one of the hash marks, then you can say, you can infer to, hun to uh, hundreds of gram. You can go one more decimal place in your guess. But if you have a digital scale, then you're, you're not inferring anything, because the digital scale is just gonna give you numbers. And the best you can do is just write it down, right? So depending on what tool you have, you record the digits that it gives you and you infer one more if possible. Okay, so let me show you some examples. Where's my little mouse? Hello, mouse. Where are you, mouse? There you are. Okay. Let me show you some pictures. Just kidding. Let me show you that picture. There you go. So uh, in a graduated cylinder, this is marked every 10 milliliters, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So the, the decimal place that it's going to definitely give me is the tens of milliliters. But if I pour some liquid in there and it's like that, then what I'm going to do is say, let's 110, 20, that's 130. The best I can do is it's not quite halfway. Call that maybe 123. See what I did? 123 or so milliliters, okay? Um, other tools will be more accurate, like this one. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 44. But uh, if I were to zoom in, I could see, I could maybe estimate 44 point something. Right, see where that is. Or 43, there you go. Uh, oh, 43.8, yeah, not quite to 44. You could read 43 and can infer 43.8. So it's almost to the 44th millimeter. Okay, so you see what, we see what we're doing. You read and then you infer. So here's a thermometer telling us the temperature of that ice bath. And it is 20, 30, 
32, 34, and it looks pretty much smack on 34. So you say 34.2, okay? You always want to infer one more decimal place if you can. So if you're measuring something, here's 40, 41.5, 41.6, it's very close to 41.6, 41.5, I don't know, 7 or 8, 41.8. Oh, sorry. There you go, sorry. 41.5, that's right. 41.55, it's halfway between the 5 and 6. There you go. So always go one more decimal place than you're reading, okay? And again, on that analog scale, you can do that as well. So this is 373.123 and a half ish. So 373.35 or something of that nature. Okay. Depending on how you want to infer that last digit. Okay. So you always want to infer one more digit. That's the that's the message of that. Okay, so the numbers that you measure and your one inferred digit we call significant. And uh, significant digits. And did you guys do anything with significant figures in past science classes? This is the first time you've met them. First time. First time, okay. You will, you will be friends with sig figs for the rest of your science career, okay? Significant digits or significant figures are, um, have to do with what numbers matter. So some numbers there are zeros that don't matter. If I were to measure this, uh, let's say I'll measure, what can I do easily? The height of this image. I measure the height of this image and it's 91.6, yeah, 91.6, I'll say 91.63. So, <clears throat> 91.63. If I write that down, there's a 9, a 1, a 6, and a 3. There are four significant digits. If I, but I can, re, I can represent the same number as 0, 9163, right? 0, 91.63. The 0 doesn't mean anything, though. The 0 is just a placeholder. It's fluffy. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's not a significant digit. It's not a number that I measured. Right? If I were to measure something as 30 centimeters, but the uh, but I didn't bother to say 30 point something, the zero at the end is kind of fluffy too. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just a placeholder. If all a zero does is hold a place for a place value, it doesn't count. Um, we only count measured digits, and there's a whole bunch of rules for if it's significant or not significant. You can see them on page 60 and 61. But right now, the take home that I want you to have for this is that I want your math to only have answers that are as significant as your measurement. So if you only measured four digits, 91.63, and then you do some math with it, and you wind up with an answer that goes out to nine decimal places, because you multiplied by things and you get more digits, or you divided by something and you get more digits in your answer. When you then present that answer to somebody, you're telling them, hey, I'm accurate to the 10,000th of a meter. No, you're not. You, you only measure, you know, you only measure two decimal places. So your answers in your math need to only have as many significant digits as your least accurate measurement. So some measurements maybe have four significant digits, some measurements have two significant digits. Then you do some math with it and you present me an answer. The answer needs to only have two significant digits. So you're gonna be rounding at the end of your math problems to reflect how accurate your least accurate measurement was. Um, we're gonna do a whole lot of practice with this. So if this doesn't make sense at this particular second, that's okay. Um, and that's the end of my slide. So let's do some, just some examples. Um, if I had, uh, well, no, let's, let's spend the last moment of class looking at significant figure rules. You go, turn your books to 60 and 61 real quick.